uh, Blackboard ePortfolio, transitioning existing activities to new technologies. Uh, the presenters are, are Helen Kyer, um, Chandra Shahijian, and uh, Caroline Peppers. Um, and uh, yes, okay. Thanks, George. Um, just a word about what we do. Um, at John Jay College, the three of us are, we form what's called the John Jay Online Support Center. We're primarily responsible for providing Blackboard and Turnitin support for our in-person classes and for the three, soon to be four degree programs John Jay offers completely online. In addition, we also offer a completely online certificate program. But in our rest of our duties, John Jay currently has over 1,400 <laughs> courses on our servers that use Blackboard every semester. So in the fall and the spring, we have a very big in, um, impact on Blackboard. It is it counts for approximately two thirds of all courses at John Jay use Blackboard in some form. My role is the manager of the sports sports center unit. Chandra Shahagian is our training and support specialist. She her primary role is to help faculty, and Caroline is our Blackboard support coordinator. Her primary role is to help students. In addition to this. Chandra and I are both adjunct faculty in the Department of Public Management, where we teach a 200 level course that's required by public management, it's required by criminal justice for their degree, and I think security management. It's called Computer Applications in Public Management. And one of, part of this course, throughout the semester, the students are collecting artifacts, and in ter we're turning in at the end of the semester a portfolio that prior to this iteration of Blackboard had been literally turned in in paper. It was a three ring binder about that big with all of their work from the semester. I still have some from a year ago. Students are still sitting there. They never picked them up. And it just became onerous. Students were complaining about the paper and having to make copies. When, so when at Christmas time, when we upgraded to the latest release to Blackboard, we installed what's called the portfolio assignments. Portfolio assignments within Blackboard are ideally create, suited to any kind of assignment that spans a period of time, spans a period of submissions, where the student may have to collect them. So what Shandra and I did this semester is we piloted with our two sections of PAD 241, turning this paper chase project the students were doing into a portfolio assignment. So I'm going to turn it over to Chandra, and she can show you how it gets set up. Okay, so I'm going to show. I'm going to actually jump to Blackboard now. Um, Helen kind of went a little bit about the paper chase. I'll go a little bit more into it. I'll show you how to create a basic assignment as well as creating a portfolio assignment. So the paper chase project has seven different elements that the student will submit throughout the semester. Um, it starts with a topic approval and goes all the way down to an annotated bibliography. Um, they have a book numbers assignment, which they have to find um, three books from the library. Periodicals assignment, where they have to create an APA page, along with they have to find nine periodicals. A website evaluation, they have to evaluate two websites on their topic. They have to do a federal depository assignment, so they actually have to go to either a federal depository library or use the online and find two articles on their topic. And then finally, they have to create a FOIA request. Um, this is something we tell our students you don't have to submit, because you know it could be months and months and months if they ever hear back. Um, but they do have to actually write out a request, whether it's going to the actual website, finding the form that they have to find, or actually writing the physical letter. In Blackboard, um, we created regular assignments for the um, individual uh, assignments they have to submit throughout the semester. And then at the end, we created a portfolio assignment. So I'm going to quickly do a regular assignment for you guys here. I'm just going to copy um, the text for it. So we're going up to assessments and then creating assignment. And I'm going to create the topic approval. So this is the very, very first assignment that they have to do. I can spell today. And I'm just going to copy and paste the text that we have there. 
Um, this is something we do ask that the students upload all of their, docu uh, their assignments in Word um, so they can be uh, later used in the portfolio. Again, just going to do quickly points possible. For us, each assignment is worth 10 points, so it's just a typical little writing assignment. And here in the submission details, it's going to be an individual, single attempt, and I'm just going to do leave the rest. I'll talk about that later. So that's typically what we do for the regular assignment. Nothing too fancy. And then for the portfolio, it is very, very simple. I'm going up to assessments and then going to assignment again. And then as you put in, Um, points possible because that is required in Blackboard. Under submission details, you're going to actually change the assignment type to portfolio submissions. And when you do that, you actually lose the plagiarism check and you can't do um, that. Um, so here again, you can change the attempt, single, multiple. I'm just going to leave it a single attempt for today. <coughs> grading options. Again, you have your regular grading options. Display of grades still stay the same. And your availability also stays the same. Um, so the only thing you do have to change is the assignment type and changing that to a portfolio. And then you would click Submit. And that's it. You're done. So now it's all up to your student. And that would be... So once again, my name is Caroline, and I am in charge of all the students. Um, any issues that they have in Blackboard at John Jay, they come to me. Um, so basically what I'm going to show you right now is just what the students would do once they have handed in all their assignments, how to create a portfolio, kind of the parts of it, um, the difference between just a basic artifact and um, adding a, a course artifact, and just other things about their portfolio. The reason why we're covering both a standard assignment and a personal artifact, the difference being, um, as you saw when Chandra created the assignment, that assignment then becomes an artifact in the portfolio. As part of the, the Paper Chase project, students have the, op the option that should that initial grade they receive out of 10 not be high, very commonly, especially with the periodicals assignment where they have to write in the APA format, they'll get a 4, they'll get a 5. So they have, they have the option at the final submission in the portfolio to include a revision. So in that case, because your initial assignment has already been satisfied by the initial upload, the students need the option to add a personal artifact. And in this, in this context, that's their revisions. So what the students will do is they'll attach to the portfolio their original submission so we can see it and their revision. So this is just a student view um, of the course itself. And just as Chandra showed all the different assignments. So as a student, I would go in, of course, I would click on all these different assignments, and I would add all my written assignments as I go along. Now, what you have to do as a student, um, you have to create your portfolio first and foremost. So up here in the right-hand corner, um, every student's going to have this link at the schools that, um, that have e-portfolios. So what I would do as a student, I would click on my portfolios. And when you get to the page, it's just it's blank because you have to create it. So I would click up here on Create Portfolio. And it's just basic, you just have to give it a name. Um, I would recommend, like, if you're going to decide to do this for your students, to make sure that the students um, have a good naming convention. Um, so just name it like Paper Chase, like the assignment, um, just so that when um, they're sending it to you and you have to look over it, you want to make sure. And also for the students themselves, so if they have multiple different portfolios, they can find it easily. So I would just name my portfolio Paper Chase. 
Um, of course, they can always add some type of description, maybe the semester, maybe the course, um, the year, uh, whatever they you know want to, to add. Um, by default, it's always going to be available, um, and that means so it's searchable, so you can find it. And then also, by default, this box here that says comments are private, if this is checked off, then um, anyone who is looking at your portfolio, they won't be able to see any type of comments that are left by instructors or other students. So just be, just be aware of that. So what I would do, I would uncheck it um, and then just press submit. Now automatically, when the students um, first begin and create their portfolio, this little tour is going to come up. I would recommend that the students go through the tour. Um, I mean, it's, it's pretty basic. It just kind of highlights every single part of the portfolio. But if you have students that really aren't tech savvy, um, or this is, it is a, a bit of a new technology in Blackboard that we're using. So if they've never used it or don't have any idea about an e-portfolio, I'd recommend that they kind of go through the tour. So basically, it just highlights the different parts of the portfolio. Um, and you can always close it out if you're just like, oh, I can figure it out myself. Um, but you can always go back to it up here in the right-hand corner if they're like, wait, how did I do that? Or I forgot that part. Um, so once you name the portfolio, the next thing you want to do is start adding pages and sections. Um, now, with this Paper Chase project, um, they are submitting uh, their writings over the semester. Um, so they could create their portfolio right in the beginning once they see the syllabus and they see that this is a topic or what they can do is they can create it at the end. Personally, if I was a student and what I would recommend is I would build it in the beginning and I would add my pages and my sections like a framework, right? So what I would do first is I would go here and I would start um, with the page up here if you click. And you can just name it, you know, whatever you want. Now there's different things. There's, um, they have the bibliography, they have, um, what are some of the other? Topic approval. Right, topic, topic approval. approval. So they have all these different things. So you could just name it, you know, topic approval and so on. And I would tell your students match uh, the name of each pages to whatever the assignment is. Just so as you as a professor or anyone who's grading it can go through it and you can easily find everything. Like I said, they could wait till the end to just kind of put this all together, but I think it's good if they build a framework first. So having one page is just like a broad topic. And then what you can do down here is you can add different sections. So say you have an overall topic approval, but maybe you have different parts of that topic approval. Um, so you could just put, you know, like first choice or, you know, whatever the, the assignment calls for. So once they do that and they build their pages, they build kind of their framework, then they can kind of build as they go. Some students are going to leave it to last minute. It just is what it is. But I think it kind of will help them just see how it looks. Of course, you can go back and you can edit everything. Um, as you like and you can delete and you can move things around um, but I think overall it's kind of like work smarter not harder kind of idea um, with that so now that I have my sections I have um, you know my pages then that's where you're gonna start adding your artifacts so you would just click up here on add artifact now the difference we were talking about um, before Helen was about adding personal artifacts as from adding from course. So the fact that I was a student and I did um, different assignments, I'm gonna click on add from course. Now you see I have a lot of um, classes, which you know, being a uh, Blackboard support, I'm in and out of a lot of classes, but students might have a long list depending on how long they've been at the college. So I'm just gonna choose the course that I wanna pull these artifacts from. And you'll notice at the top, then these are some of my assignments that I've done. Now you can add multiple artifacts at one time by just checking off everything, um, or you know you can select different things depending on how you want to build it, how you want to show um, the different topics, the sections, um, and so on. So let me close that. So here you have it. You have your assignment here. And it's just going to show up as you add your artifacts. They're just they're just going to show up here. Now below here you have what's called the text editor, which if you've worked in Blackboard, you're very familiar with, and you see it all the time, right? 
Um, what's nice about this part for the students is not only can they add their artifacts up here, but they can add videos, they can add images, um, they can even use video everywhere. If you guys are familiar or any professors have used that, it's a pretty fun tool. Um, so it makes it, I think, a little bit you know, more engaging. It's not just a, a scrolling sheet of, of paper assignments. And especially nowadays with students, they're very about social media, they use Vine, they use YouTube, they might even create videos, videos themselves. So why not, you know, you could have a whole video portfolio if you wanted, depending on you can make an assignment like that. Um, so you can add anything you like here, and then you would just press save. Um, so that's pretty much, I know I don't want to go over on time, but so as you go along, you would just add um, your different artifacts and you would just build your portfolio. Oh yeah, definitely. Okay, so now we I added from course and then add personal artifact. So this could just be anything that um, the, as we were talking about before about the revisions. So the first one was the graded one from the course and the add the personal artifact once that student has a revision, so then they could add their own or it could be, you know, something else that they wanted to add to the portfolio, maybe a personal writing that they had, a journal article, you know, whatever that they found that maybe they thought was conducive um, with the assignment as a whole. Um, so kind of same idea, you know, title, add a description, um, they can add further content or they can attach um, a file. Um, so, you know, if it's just something that you have, then of course they would just go to browse my computer, they would look for their file, um, and they could add another one. So here's the their personal um, artifact. Here is the graded assignment. Um, so lastly, once they've built their portfolios, um, let me just view it here. So it would just break down, you know, obviously in, in the essence of time, we don't have anything that I can build a, a, a super long one, but they can customize their style. Um, they can change the layouts, kind of like templates. Um, and they can also, um, you know, change colors. Um, different colors are always fun and appealing. Um, so let me go back. So lastly, two important things before I give it back to um, Helen and we wrap up is when they want to share their portfolios. So here, this is where all the portfolios are gonna show up once you've created them. So they could have all different types of portfolios. They could have junior year portfolio, they could have their assignment portfolios. Um, so they could have all different types. When they're ready or they wanna share it to other professors or colleagues, other students, wherever they wanna share it with, um, they would click on more and they would click on share. So this is a way, now currently right now I don't have anything shared, but if you go up here to where share a snapshot with, there's all these different places that you can share. Now within Blackboard you can look for users because anyone in Blackboard is considered a user. Um, for external users, which might be something that they would use more, especially if it's like, um, you know, maybe they're going to a job interview and they want to send it ahead of time or something like that, um, they would choose share with internal, external users and just enter the email and then enter any type of extra information that they want to tell um, whoever is receiving this about. Um, you can even put a password, um, which I think is nice. You know, definitely today in our world with um, intellectual property, I think that's kind of a, an important feature. They can also add um, expiration dates. So you can have no expiration, so they will be able to access it all the time or you can give what's called a pass. So it's only, they would only be able to access it for a couple of days, um, depending on how you wanna set it up. And lastly is, back, is you can download it. And what this, um, you can download the portfolio so you can keep it you know, for your own um, use. And it just creates a basic um, zip file that you can open outside of Blackboard. This is a standard zip file. It's not the same zip file format when you download an archive or export from your Blackboard course. Right. And it includes an index.html file so that if a student were to try to re-import that, that content into, say, a website, it would work. 
So that's a quick just kind of how students view it. Um, I'm going to give it back to Helen just to show kind of talk about wrap it up and about things that we have learned by um, by using this feature. This semester is still ongoing, and these assignments are not due for another, from the students for another week from this coming Sunday. They're due like a few days after the last day of classes. So unfortunately, we don't have any live examples from our students yet to show you. But in the process through the semester with the students, we have picked up a few things to keep in mind when you're doing this. One of the things I encountered with my class now the section of PAD 241 that I teach is a face-to-face -face standard classroom class. Chandra's section, on the other hand, is a completely online section. So one of the things we're hoping to do when this is over is compare the student outcomes in each class to see which one may have done more, may have had an easier time putting the portfolio together, because I've, at two times during the semester, took 10 minutes of my class time and walked the students through doing this. You'll also notice that on that page with all the assignments, that was a copy right out of my live course. I put the link to the help.blackboard.com page for, e -por for the portfolios right there. And there's also, if you were to scroll down, a folder with additional resources, such as cute PDF and things like that so that the students, when they're compiling their artifacts, they have the resources they need is that website evaluation assignment. We may <coughs> want to see the website that they're evaluating. This way they can save that, that website they're looking at as a PDF easily and incorporate it into their portfolio. But one of the things I, with one of my students who helped me with testing some of these was that the assignments, he could not select an assignment as an artifact until after I had graded it. So from a faculty standpoint, that kind of ma makes it really important for us to keep on top of grading our things timely, because I like to think I'm really good in the classroom. That's one way I know I can do better as a professor. I'm sometimes not as quick as I need to be with getting assignments back. Also, that comments feature keeps a running log of the comments on the portfolio as a whole. It doesn't append them to a particular artifact within the, within the portfolio. And I think this is something that we probably should recommend to Blackboard as a product enhancement. Because I'd like to be able to see comments on this particular artifact so that it, it kind of stays contextual. That header piece is one of the things you see when you go through the quick walkthrough. It cannot be disabled, and it appears at the top of every page. But it doesn't allow you to put anything in it other than text. Like the student can't embed an image. Like say they wanted to really make it look very pretty, that could either it should either be disabled or make it a full text editor box where they can import an image. Um, and also the sharing of the portfolios shares only a snapshot at that time when you create the t that email ticket that allows someone in. It's not live, so if the student goes in and then updates content, the recipient of that sharing link won't see the new content. They only see what was in the portfolio at the time the link was created. Um, in addition, since we made up our slides earlier in the week, I did, I'm did. i also investigating um, a possible issue with one of my students. I'm not sure yet if one of the PDFs she was uploading has a problem, or maybe she was just uploading too many onto one artifact, but she was having, she got an error message when attaching that periodicals assignment to her portfolio. Because that periodicals assignment is they have to find nine articles and submit PDFs of each of the articles. So it might have been a size issue. Because she had nine PDFs on the one artifact. So that might have been a problem there. We're still looking into that. If you have any questions, please feel free to email us at blackboard at jjay.cuny.edu. That is a shared email address, so all three of us get it. It's easier to give that one out than any of our personal accounts. So let us know if you have a question or if you have a concern, and we'll be happy. We'll be back and be more than welcome to hearing us. Thank you. Thank you.